Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, we're uh, this is part of the series I'm putting together where we're using uh, the XR2 combined with the Aerofreighter to go all the way out to Jupiter with the eventual goal of landing on Io. And as you can see, we're here, we have made it to Io. So, and so now all we have to do is uh, we're really close to the pass over top of Io base. And this isn't a real base, by the way. Um, it doesn't come with the orbiter. I just took a copy of Brighton Beach from Orbiter 2010 and put it on uh, Io so that I would just have a target. So we're just a couple of orbits away now from that passage, and this is the one we're going to take. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, switch camera views here and uh, warp time forward to get closer to the time when we can undock the XR2 and have it land at IO base. I'm a little concerned about my orbit around IO because it seems to be oscillating quite a bit. And I'm concerned that it's going to uh, oscillate so much that I lose, you know, several kilometers on my PEA to the point that I end up hitting the ground. I hope that doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, you can see it's, it's just not a stable orbit. Okay, so that just updated crazily because somewhere down the list farther, we got a better passage. So now I'm just going to change my number to 2 and warp time forward. So where are we? We're here. So when we get over to this point, then then th that'll be our final orbit. So we need to go around to here and then back around to here. So we're at the halfway point. But we'll probably start undocking the XR2. Um, actually, maybe we'll even do that just when we get over here. Warping time forward. Okay, so coming up on this orbit right here, it says we're going to be about 60 kilometers from the base, but I think we'll still be able to make it work. But we'll go ahead now, right at this point, and we'll go back to real time, and now we'll begin getting the XR2 ready for landing on Io. So let's go inside the uh, the Aero Freighter. Let me adjust these so that I'm not blocking it with my camera. We're going to bring up um, the generic camera on this side, and we're going to switch to uh, that view works, and we'll open. The, uh, the docking bay, and I'm unfortunately I'm using XR sound instead of orbiter sound. There would be some really cool sound effects um, if we had orbiter sound, but <clears throat> I found that inside of the XR2 I wasn't getting any sounds at all when I had orbiter sound, so unfortunately, uh, yeah, it, it, and I didn't want to switch back and forth between sound systems. Okay, so the bays are open. Okay, so let me think here. I guess what we could do, uh, let me go ahead and go inside of the XR2 for a moment. Okay. Not a problem. You know what? Not a problem. Because this didn't actually happen. Because realistically, think about it. Let me switch. There's no way that would have happened because we docked the XR2 with the Aero Freighter and clearly the crew transferred into the Aero Freighter. The fact that we didn't simulate that um, isn't relevant because there, you can't do it right now with Orbiter 2016. Those modules just don't exist. And I specifically remember turning on external cooling in the XR2 when we docked with the Aero Freighter. So what happened then was somewhere between, you know, switching back and forth between vessels and saving and reloading Orbiter, the external cooling was turned off. And so as a result, with all the time warp, you know, the crew died 
a few days after we left Earth. But that's not a real problem, I don't think. I think what we can do is use the scenario editor, uh, not cheating because the crew is alive and well in the aero freighter. And let me think, we would have to, what, what time are we at on the video? Only five minutes. So I think what we would have to do is delete the XR2 from the scenario and create a new one because I don't think there's any way for me to fix the oxygen situation um, in that vessel. Uh, I'd have to edit the scenario file or something. So let me let me try this. Let me see if I can do this first. So let's delete the XR2. Undocking confirmed. And then we have this other stuff now that we need to get rid of. Delete that. Delete that. And then we have these fuel modules that apparently never burned up at Earth, so they're in some orbit. Delete that, delete that. So hopefully you understand what I'm doing here. So now we're just going to create a new XR2 and have it docked with the aero freighter and just, you know, through no fault of our own really, just a limitation of orbiter safe files and all of that. The crew died, but they didn't really, so... So we'll create a new vessel, XR2-01. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have my umbrella skin. So I'll have the generic XR2, set input focus, create. Wheels all systems nominal. And it put it way back here at Earth, but that's okay. We'll go to docking. Now, the only thing I'm not sure of is which way do you have to dock? Because if you select them in the wrong order, it's going to bring the aero freighter to here as opposed to putting the XR2 up with the aero freighter. So let me do this. Let's find out which way we need to go. So this has input focus. So let's open the nose cone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dock the Raven Star uh, with something else that we have in the scenario and see which way they go, because I don't remember. I would hate to act, get it wrong and then dock and it pulls the aero freighter all the way from Io over to here. Uh, bit of a kludge here, but you know, that's orbiter sometimes. All right, so we, are, we have the XR2 selected. I feel like I can't remember which way it goes. It seemed to me like it was backwards of what seemed logical. So establish connection with, um, and all we have is the aero freighter. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Perfect. This is what I need. Okay, I've never noticed this before. So I want to move me to target, not the other way around. So that must have been the problem. Was I just I always had that one selected? So great. So we're going to move me to current target position please be right yes okay great so now we have an XR2 alive and well inside of the aero freighter so let's go ahead and select uh, let's get inside the XR2 and let's uh, fix up our situation here. So let me go ahead and turn on external cooling. And what my plan was was to top up our resources using the um, you know using the the aero freighter but effectively I just did that because since we created a new XR2 we effectively just replenished all of our resources although I have no desire for scram so instead of dumping it uh, since we never had it in the XR2 since we used it all up instead of so instead of just dumping it here I am going to edit the propellant and I think it's three yep so I'm Warning. just gonna get, fuel so I'm low. just gonna get rid of that Warning. scram scram fuel depleted 
And again, that's not a cheat because that's when, when we took off from Earth, we burned through all of our scram fuel. So then my other, the thing I was going to do was open Box our lines hatch, fuel hatch open. before we left the XR, uh, or before we left the Aero Freighter. I was just going to open up our fueling systems and then just make sure everything was topped up. So we would have uh, had to draw some fuel because I think we were down to 80%. Main fuel tanks full. No external line pressure. AP I didn't want to do the scram. Tanks, locks tanks full. So that's that's all of our stuff topped up. So locks, let me close those lines. Systems offline. Now the other thing that we need to do to get this XR2 back the way it was is we need the crew habitat module. So let's go to the payload editor. I had no plan of doing what I'm doing right now, but that's just the way it went. So there, the crew habitat module is now inside. And you know what? I forgot to switch camera views. Let me do that now. Man, I... You know what? I'm really tempted to redo this part because I hate when I forget to switch camera views. But I don't think I don't feel like we've lost out on anything at this point because all we did was um, mess around with the XR2. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to keep it. Usually, when I notice that, I redo the mission or I redo that part. But I think we're—I think I think it's okay for this for this uh, for this time. Okay, so now this XR2 is in the state that the other one was. So the only thing I need to do now is turn off external cooling. Using onboard O2. And now we're going to undock. I really wish I had those camera views that the that the aero freighter has because when I undock I would love to be able to see on my MFDs my my the the back of the uh, the XR2 and the top of the XR2 that that would probably be good enough just the back and the top so that I know I'm not uh, running into the rear part and I know that I'm not somehow translating up into the into the aero freighter all of the other movements i can manage with the dock mfd so if i bring up i don't need this so let me bring up dock on this side and if i target the docking port one which is the one we're on as i'm undocking i can use this to make sure that my left right is uh, stayed center by watching that cross that yellow cross as long as that crossbar is in the center then I don't have to worry about the wings of the XR2 hitting the payload bay doors of the aero freighter but I can't I don't really have any good way to know that I'm not backing up too far I guess all I can really do is use initially I can use the distance and get like maybe one meter away and then translate aggressively down so that I, I'm just clear of the aero freighter so let's go ahead and do that all right, turn on the APU. Do we need the APU on right now? No, because what we're going to do is undock. We'll close the nose cone later. All right, so undock. As soon as I get the nerve to click the button. Rotation. Translation. It's translation. Undock. Undocking confirmed. Okay, so we're backing up pretty fast. So now I'm going to put in forward translation so my distance doesn't go any farther back and now I'm gonna put in down translation so that I can get away free and clear of the aero freighter there that was executed pretty well so you can see here like that crossbar that lets me manage my left right so I don't have to rely on the external view to see if I'm hitting these uh these cargo bay doors but as far as like the front back goes there's really nothing i can go by except for initially my distance but as soon as i start translating down the distance doesn't mean anything anymore as far as my uh back front goes okay so let's uh get rid of some of that down translation and let me bring up comnav on this side to get rid of that beeping 
So we'll just go off frequency. There we go. So we're off frequency, so we don't have that uh, noise anymore. So if we want, we could go back into the aero freighter and um, close the doors, but maybe we'll just go ahead and leave those open. All right, let's see, how are things? So we're 15 minutes and we are translating slowly away from the um, from the aero freighter and we have one we have a half we have one whole orbit to go until we're going to land and we have about a half of an orbit to go until we do our deorbit maneuver and when we do our deorbit maneuver we're going to slow down so we would like to have the aero freighter out in front of us so that when we slow down uh, we can we we don't so if we're in front of the aero freighter and we slow down the aero freighter is just going to run right through us so we should probably do a bit of backwards translation let's bring up our hud and we should if we look up we should see the aero freighter going out in front of us here if i put in a bit more translation it'll go a bit faster Okay, so uh, a couple more minutes on this video, and while I'm thinking about um, common nav stuff and we have that open, I'm going to press Control i to bring up IO base, probably way down at the bottom somewhere, there it is, and we're going to put our long range on nav 1, which is 116, 30, and then we're going to put landing pad number one, probably, yeah, on, on nav two, 13220, one, I should have went backwards, 13220, we'll go backwards, should have went forwards on that one, so 13220, okay, so we have our uh, communication equipment established, now we can turn on the APU, close up the nose cone, so don't forget about that. Or did I already do that? No. A little bit of time warp to speed up the animation. Okay. Turn off the APU. Now, does IO have an atmosphere? I honestly don't know. It kind of looks like it does. Like you can see that little bit of a glow. But if it does, I'm assuming we can ignore it. So let's go to this view. Does is there anything in orbiter that tells me celestial body IO atmosphere? Yes. Surface pressure zero pascal. Hmm. Let me let me compare that to Earth really quick. So yes, but yeah, surface pressure is way. So I'm, I'm assuming. Let me okay. Let me look at the moon. No atmosphere. Okay, so let's compare with Mars. So Mars surface pressure is 610 pascal. So I think we can ignore it. Yeah, I think we can ignore it. Um, okay, so there goes the Aero Freighter. And yeah, we're up about 20 minutes. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. Let me do a quick save. And when we come back, we're going to do our deorbit maneuver. And um, I guess we'll we'll see if we can we'll see if we can land on IO as well. Uh, we'll see if we can land at IO base in the next video. I'm just, I'm thinking about a, a few things here, but um, anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button, leave comments. I'll see you in the next part.